Jupiter Broadcasting presents this program in stereo. This episode brought to you by the extreme folks over at GoDaddy.com. This week on the Linux Action Show, we've got the ultimate Linux home server that is business up front and all party in the back. Find out how this bolt-on solution can revolutionize an otherwise lame duck system. Then, Adobe Air is dropping support for Linux. Find out why Adobe is ushering in their own demise. All this week! All the Linux Action Show! Welcome to Linux Action Show, Season 17, Episode 4. My name is, of course, without a doubt, Brian. Chris. Hey there, Brian. Check out this awesome fanless PC that has two PCI Express, or has two PCI slots. One, which is Express, perfect for Bitcoin mining, and it runs Linux. All right, wait a minute. Back up a second. What, Brian? What? Last week, didn't we have like uh, like army flak jackets and all sorts of crazy yeah, stuff yeah. that was around Linux? Yeah, yeah. This week, yeah. are you telling me that we went from awesome, crazy, save everyone's life, uh, run the whole military, runs Linux, to uh, this PC that happens to not have a fan runs Linux? Well, but look at this thing. It's got these... Uh, the case has built in... Are you joking with built me Built-in thermal <laughs> venting, Brian. Oh, I do like that. Dual gigabit Ethernet DVI. Are those serial ports on the back? Serial ports There's up the wall. four wazoo. serial... What? Who... Ha- Dude, check and, that out. There's, and like, there's four serial are you, are ports Are you on ready the back. for this? Wait a minute. It's Chris. actually a... Chris. I know, man. I Those see. are four COM ports. And? Have you ever used a COM port in the last, like, it's I got, don't know, 15 years? It's got two RS-232s plus another two RS-232s, which are also compatible <laughs> with 422 and 485 <laughs> ports. What? And this thing has this thing can go up to a 2.0 gigahertz Core i7 chip. So you can actually get a Core i7 chip in this bad mamma jamma. Oh, that's not bad. Right? And you've got four COM ports for all of your COM port needs. Um, well, and my Bitcoin emails, All right, too. I, I send out a challenge to the chat room. Over the course of the show, I want the chat room to find a use for having a Core i7 desktop with four COM ports. That's legitimately cool. What Because I can't think of anything. I got it. What about, you got this sophisticated server room with these nice UPSs, but you don't want to bust out the cash for one of them super fancy UPS shutdown software suite packages that works across all your different platforms. So you buy one of these box, you put them in there, and you hook up the UPSs to all the COM ports, and bam, now you manage your UPSs in a power out situation. Bob's your uncle. Right? I dislike that when the chat room, however, says oh. run four Commodore 64 joysticks with a Commodore 64 emulator. That, in fact, is the winning entry in this contest. I like the idea of running four cool. modems, you know? Throw this thing and make it oh, a BBS four, server. Four and... old U.S. robotics external yeah. modems. Oh, that actually yeah. is kind of a cool idea. Now, uh, we wanted to say... <laughs> I take it back. That's the best runs Linux you've had in a long time. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> folks. GoDaddy.com has got you covered with domain names low as, low as $1.99 you plus world-class this, hosting. Everybody. Fast and easy something, 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 tech support, something, 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 Danica Patrick, something, 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 Dude. and you type in Linux and you save 10% when you get a domain so name. it's Father's Day today, right? And uh, I'm a simple guy. What I got for Father's Day so far is this Father's Day shirt that I'm wearing. It says I'm a cool dad. I like it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to you, sir. And uh, so Danica wrote me a letter. Now, I... I have every reason to believe this is truly from Danica Kapatrick of GoDaddy.com. I'm positive Ryan. it is. But she said that uh, that she might be uh, looking for her next potential father of her children. <laughs> and she just said, hey, I know it's Father's Day. I know you talk about me a lot. So she just dropped me a little note. I thought it was nice. Yeah, a little note. It's from Danica Kapatrick over at GoDaddy. So thank you, Danica. And she said, by the way, by the way, she's going to get a blog started. She's going to register it with the code Linux. Save 10%. Oh, I bet you will. So we also use their hosting and use the code Linux20 to save 20% off their hosting. I am not coming in on any of that stuff. She she really knows how to get a deal. And race car. And race cars. And right? race cars. Which is not busy racing cars. No, no, no. Right. Now we've got an Android pick. We do. We've got a Linux desktop pick. We think we do, yeah. But I wanted to give people a warning that if you tune in live to the Linux Action Show, which we're normally live Sunday at 10 a.m., yeah. we're not going to be live Sunday at 10 a.m. next week. So we're giving you a week's heads up right That's now. That's right. We're not. Aren't we being good guys? We're being yeah. like a whole week's right. heads up. A, a he, heads up. Yeah. Advanced yeah. notice. Yeah. We got some stuff yeah. we're going to be doing that Sunday. So we're going to move the recording of the show to Thursday. 
Uh, so go over to jupiterbroadcasting.com slash calendar, and we'll put up uh, on as we'll that, put up a new thing there. And also, you know, we'll Twitter it and Facebook it and all the totally. other all the other social media stealing all your private information yeah. things ways that that, that, that we can get a hold of. Yeah, you. absolutely. Yeah. Ways we can spam you. Uh, and we, we will. How much we will that. spam you. I'm, I'm telling you straight up, if you subscribe to all of those things, we will spam the hell out of you, and you will love it. <laughs> I wanted to, you know, actually, speaking of stealing your privacy, today's app pick might fit pretty well with that. I'm not positive, and I'm not saying they steal your privacy, but I'm saying they might. I'm just putting that out there as a disclaimer. I've been trying something. Every now and then, B-Man, I take a bullet for the folks. Are you okay? I'll tell you, two things I've been taking a bullet on is A, Friday, and B, Lookout. I've been running Lookout for quite a while, so All that right. way when I make it a pick, I can say Lookout All right, is what X. is What is Friday? So Friday... I have no idea. It's Friday, Brian, and it is an app that's in alpha right now. It's closed alpha. I'll put a link where you can request in here, but it's going to blow up once they come out of alpha. It's going to blow up? And I wanted to tell people about it. So it is basically a life indexer. And if you look here, it gives you stats and information about different aspects of your interactions with people, your music, your places you travel, all these kinds of historical data that can essentially mine from your phone in real time, like when you got a call, where, where you were when that call came in, the frequency of your calls, the uh, you know, and then they'll give you charts and graphs based on information. You can see how busy you are with email and when you most likely get emails, and you can get stats on calendar appointments. You can find out which day you're the least busy so you can schedule things, and then you can ask Friday, you know, uh, when do I most commonly chat with Brian? And then they'll... Boop, 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 Friday says, and then it'll you know give you a report. Pretty wild, huh? See, so they have this little search query. And it always comes with uh, trivia, like when you start up the app, like it'll say here you listen to music mostly between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. That kind of stuff. And then you can see like where was I when I listened to this song? What do you think of that, Brian? Can I ask you a question, Chris? Sure, be man. What on God's green earth would you ever need this for? I. I don't know. I know people are stat. Aha! I've I data mined myself. Aha! I've got all I, of my own information I now. I honestly... Man, advertising to myself is going to be so easy now. I honestly... Well, so far there's no advertising in this. I don't no, does, really... It, does all your data go up to the cloud? Does it all it go up to their to, server? Or is it just be, on the local Android device? It seems device? to be locally processed. Right. I don't know for sure. See, one thing I'm doing is that's one of the reasons I'm running it so that way I could just kind of find out. I don't actually think if I wasn't doing this review for the show, I don't think I'd actually ever really use this software. It but looks kind of cool. Like it's got a cool look to well, it. Well, it could be. I, I could really see it like having a lot of value on a business only phone where, uh, you know, maybe you interact a lot with clients and stuff. And these are stats and information that would actually oh, be really see. good. Yeah, you've got, you've got, well, this seems to be my client time. So I'm just going to always block this out. Well, and you, if you like say this was only a work phone, all of these things would presumably be pretty much work related. And I could probably pull a lot of metrics out there for my well, job. You could pull billing data out of it. Billing data and all and scheduling stuff and all kinds uh, of stuff. But let's be honest. If you were like a consultant and you you charge by the hour. You're making up billing data anyway. Oh, Brian. <laughs> so uh, anyways, Friday's interesting. It's something to keep an eye out for. And when you, you're probably going to start hearing a lot about it in the next few weeks. I'll include a link in the show notes where you can find out more. If you are a stat junkie, this is definitely the way to go. Right, huh. B-Man? Now, huh. let's, let's... I got to say I'm a stat junkie. That might be the way to not go. Not a stat junkie, Chris. I don't really... Chris, I am not... Under any circumstances, a stat junkie. I'm also, I don't want this, Chris. I'll also tell you, I'm running Lookout Security because I want to... I'm curious about that see, one, That's though. another one I wouldn't normally do. But that one I'm curious about. I'm really interested to so see how that I've goes. I've been running you. Friday yeah. for about three weeks, and uh, everything you do on your so phone... So when, when do we mostly talk? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I actually oh. don't know. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> so tell me, give me an example of one time that you've used this, and you're like, damn, I'm glad I know that, I, that statistic I've, about myself. I've only jumped in there out of curiosity ever, so there you go. All right. Hey, let's talk about your desktop pick, because this is a yeah, great so one. Yeah, this is a common one. Come on. I, every now and then, you got you right, to go with one. the old on, standards, the classics, because they're just so great, and they deserve a shout out because even though they've been around forever. And this week is Free Civ, Free which Civ, is basically buddy. the open source implementation of a civilization type game. It is awesome. It has been around forever. And the really great part, you can play it multiplayer with a whole bunch of people. Uh, basically, it acts as a server. Yeah. And it connects with your clients. And so you can play. <laughs> Chris and me can play. Yeah. My wife can play who yeah. likes civilization. A whole bunch of people can connect in and play. You can mod the hell out of this. You can have packs of, of new artwork and new uh, new units units and all sorts of stuff and what's even cooler there's a version of this for my n900 and my n810 so i can run it on my mamo tablets that's cool connected to the main server running on my desktop oh, so i yeah, can be walking around world. the house the playing same, the same oh, game f awesome f awesome that is cool ah uh, 
some. So there's a link in the show notes. Here's for that the one. crazy thing. Oh. Civilization Five, the yeah. official big Civ Five, Civ 5 is out. Yeah. yeah, doesn't have that functionality that I've seen. Oh well, no, not not like device support like that. That's... No, but not just device support, but that crazy great multiplayer oh, support. Oh, like well, there I don't is, know. Mo- like they're just uh, you know, there's hot seat and everything who would, else. Who but would the need multiplayer it? support in this is just fantastic. Who would need it? You got free this. Civ is great. The graphics are dated. It looks a lot like Civilization Two. It's all oh, isometric it's and whatnot, but I love it. It's one of the best games out there. It's phenomenal. I know, I know. We've already talked about other strategy games in the past, but I like strategy games. You do like strategy. What games. can I say? If you you don't like strategy games. You know what you should do? You should make your own damn podcast, and then you can <laughs> you can do Linux app picks that don't have to do with strategy games. There you go. Or you know, always recommend a really awesome app, and then it'll probably make it into. Oh the yeah, show, it's but, probably because yeah. here's the thing. Yeah. Super lazy guy. Yeah. No. This, if this somebody guy. gives you a this great guy. app, if, if someone somebody... just sends it over to me, I'm like, oh, yeah. that is fantastic, yeah. and I'm probably just going to use like that. I do like that app. I love that. I yeah. didn't even know. But I if it's that. if it's a sucky app, that's probably not going to get picked. So I wouldn't send sucky apps. In, <laughs> in you know fact. If you send in a sucky app, I'm gonna make fun of it. Oh, sorry. That'd be funny to have an app pick where you just make fun of. It. Well, yeah, this is that was yeah. my tongue. I don't want. To, I wasn't making fun of Friday, but I was kind of like, I yeah. don't know where Friday's going. I'm still trying to figure it out. So there you go. There's two picks. For I don't you. know that I understand. It's actually kind of neat. Like honestly, that's that's like a ton of work. They they put a lot of oh, work into definitely that. Definitely a ton. And of work. it looks really cool. And it is one of the best looking Android apps out. It there. does. It looks really cool. Mm-hmm. I just mm-hmm. I don't I don't get it. Yeah. All yeah. right, B man. Let's do the news. Okay. What's new in the news this week? All right, Brian, the top story on the news docket for this week. Pisses me off. Adobe abandons Air for Linux. Good job, Adobe. Good job. And And here's the part that pisses me off the most. All right. That five word, really only four words plus a word four, which doesn't even really count as a word in a thing, you know? Uh, Summary of that news headline there. That's like the whole story, basically. It really is. And that blows. It Go is. ahead and read your... Read, so, you've got some highlighted text I here. Do. Read that. So, because what, what got me is, it, is kind of the way it's spun. It says, Adobe also announced that it's shifting its focus from being completely cross-platform on the desktop to focusing on development and new features for emerging mobile markets. Uh, if you read... Uh, the, what in the God's hell is an emerging mobile market? What were they talking about? Uh, mobile markets in Zimbabwe? They just don't have a lot of mobiles? Well, so... Are we and, talking about new mobile platforms don't that for, don't have Flash and Air? You have to also what kind are they of... What, they going to put it on iPhone? No, they can't because they won't right? let them. No, so well, who, you have to figure... Well. Android. Android. They say you figure mobile devices, I think Android. They and, and I think Blackberry's platform, but they've already got, got that. Those. And the way they kind of the way they kind of spun this was, as well, Air is going to now just be the responsibility of the OEM. Well, if Linux doesn't have an OEM to oh, package it up... Screw off. Screw off, Adobe. I don't mean screw off you, Chris. No, I know, I know. No, you're just messenger. I don't no, mean to shoot the messenger, no. Chris. Thanks, Brian. You're cool. <laughs> Chris, you're cool with me. I was starting to cry on the inside, Brian. But God damn it. I know, it really Damn it. Me. it. I know. And I had as a and I was somebody who has used air. Not just used air, made a significant I've talked on the show repeatedly about how that's a cool way to make Linux apps. That's a great way how, for how people to go make to cross platform Linux apps. I'm gonna Google this while you talk about it, but how long do you think how long ago was Adobe Air introduced? It's been a few years now, right? It's been right? a couple of years, so yeah. Just, I'm just thinking, I'm looking at what we've seen come out of Adobe, Air, what we've seen like app-wise come out for for Adobe Air. Like, there's some great apps. There are. There's like definitely like even video editors and stuff, but come on, what really took off was Twitter clients. Twitter right? clients and um, and mock-up tools, tools like Balsamic. But we've got that covered already under No, 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 no. Okay, so... So a lot of so like tools like Balsamic is, is it, a really it initial one. release was February twenty fifth two thousand and eight three years ago three years ago and I think we <laughs> covered that here yeah um, here's here's the thing I use Air almost every day whoa really At, uh, yeah because there are apps like Balsamic uh, honestly for UI mockup Balsamic's a great tool okay. And it's one that a lot of people use for a lot of projects. So it makes it very easy to work with people when you're, when you're doing that sort of thing. So the fact that we've got Air on Linux makes Linux that much more of, of a, a viable cross option development platform. for cross-platform development or, or among multiple developers. Yeah. And they're trying to take it away from me? That's so douchey. You know, I mean, yeah. I know, I know Air itself is free, but they've been promoting Air as a cross platform runtime environment. That's what, for, that's for why apps. you put your chips in, uh, that's why you would bet on that platform. But, um, that's the whole reason I bet on that platform. That's now, the whole but isn't, reason. Isn't this the true definition of why we want 
things like the foundation of our software to be an open source project because this kind of this crap kind of happens. This kind of thing can happen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I also heard from another developer who said, uh, I've, in my experience, a lot of shops who are developing uh, automated testing systems to test different usage case scenarios yeah. use Air on Linux. And what they do is they build like this runtime environment with Air to do all of the automated testing. Because in Damn these, it. they'll do like 30 or 40 different configuration scenarios using these. Uh, virtual environments on Linux boxes, and they just simply don't want to pay the Windows licenses to do that kind of thing. And so a lot of shops will roll out I entire labs of Linux to do uh, application development testing automated. It works great. And without air, that is all gone for them. It's now. all gone for them. Yeah. They, they have to go to a completely different setup to make that to make that task work. Yeah. And that just sucks. Dude. Here's it's the thing like about Adobe, is <sighs> Adobe continues to disappoint on uh, every level every single as, as a level. company. Um, the, uh, the, the whole fact that... I, we We've now for years had Flash promised Flash on mobile is just about to get better. It's just about there. It's in beta, but it's going to be great. Oh, and when it ships on this tablet, then you're going to be able to do full Hulu HD playback, and it's finally going to work right, and then it doesn't. Or they, or like when they advertise the Zoom, here's the Motorola Zoom, and it does all this crap, and it has Flash with an asterisk mark. That asterisk mark is, oh, it doesn't actually ship with Flash because Adobe can't get their crap together. I mean, they're just constantly failing, and now this. Constantly. And you know what's crazy? Hmm. It's not like the tech technology is really that bad it's not like no. i mean because i mean honestly n810 and n900s from nokia's have full flash 9 they rock wonderfully well yeah good performance i mean especially right. for a handheld like that playing games all sorts of stuff it works great on those devices so it's possible mm -hmm. they can do it they can they just screw and, up constantly and here's the other angle it's like they want to disappoint me that's here's, what they want to do they're like what would brian like if we did oh let's do let's do the opposite let's not, let's do, that. not do that instead sure. let's add features to photoshop that are not necessary and charge people 700 dollars to upgrade to i it. know right now here's the other angle to look at this is aren't they sort of now hitching their let me back up linux is the only desktop platform that is not directly competing with Adobe in that market. Yes! Microsoft has Silverlight. Apple pushes heavily HTML5 or the right. iOS platform. Adobe is now basically, as far as the desktop, is hitched to... The two, they're two competitors. Whereas Linux, it's such an open marketplace where we're just, you know, use the tech. You bring your own technology. We're, you know, BYOT. Yeah. And Adobe doesn't have to worry about the maker and creator and curator of that platform making a directly competing product. You know, you know what would be it's, crazy? It's ridiculous. Yeah, think think about this for a second. Just you know, take you know all your preconceived notions aside. All right, our loyal listeners, think about this. What if pure what if? All right, don't cloud up your mind with oh they wouldn't do that. But don't just think about it. what if? What if Adobe tomorrow came out and said you know what? Here's Adobe OS. It's based on Linux. It's a GNOME or KDE distro with a full suite hmm. of Adobe Creative Suite applications. Hmm. Flash, Flex, Flash Builder, Flex, uh, you know, Premiere, Photoshop, The Works, Illustrator. Sure. And here they are for you. And you get a full optimized system for running Adobe applications where it's sanctioned and it's going to have you the best experience. Let's be honest. That crap would take off like sure. crazy hotcakes filled have, with firecrackers. You'd have uh, shops where that would just be what they'd roll that out as the their thing. designer station. Yeah, Here's that would be the system. The platform that they would use for that. That would yeah. be absolutely it. Yeah. And Adobe could basically... And Adobe, Adobe could, could put like an app store in there and then their partners could resell like yes. plugins for their apps. Exactly. And, they would yeah. have total control over it and they could get away with charging almost twice as much per seat than they do just for creative and they could and, like And companies would pay that. They could handpick like the best apps that reflect their platform the best. I mean, it would really be a nice move and then they're not really hitching themselves to their competitors and but I'm, i mean sure it would be a predominantly almost closed source you know the platform flip side at that is, point. is but it would work for them and they instead of doing that they're like you know what let's just let's just make more apps for and apple and microsoft's platform and here's what we can fine, hope but <sighs> here's what we can hope the end all net result is uh maybe by doing this there's a little more momentum on adobe becoming more irrelevant because maybe this will just push them a little faster into relevancy because it seems like this is obviously a company of the late '80s, early '90s, and they're just not getting it anymore. They don't seem to be getting and it. And if it, they didn't have their, if they me. didn't have their cash cow products, they wouldn't be around anymore. You know, and, and what's really super sad to me is because Adobe has a couple of key bits of technology that are cool. Let's air yeah, whatever sure. you think of it is actually pretty it's, cool. Yeah. It's, a, it's a cool runtime environment. It's got some cool stuff going on. Uh, they have some open source software, uh, some open code that they put out there for building uh, UIs. And they've opened and uh, they're across they've op platforms. They've opened up actually a lot of components of the flash 
flash stuff and, and all it's, that. It's very not cool. The actual the runtime. Flex but. SDK is yep. all open source. There's so much stuff that they've done right. It's like they don't want to do it all right, though. They're like they want to do just enough right to make it so no, you know, uh, we're mad. The at stuff them. you're talking about sounds like the technical engineer people that are making decisions, and then the other big decisions that come down come up from idiots up top. That's what it sounds like to me. It's kind of exactly what it sounds like. All right, should we move on to the next stupid, story? Stupid, stupid, stupid. Now this one, hey, I- Chris. Thank you, though. You're welcome. For presenting that news topic. You're welcome, Brian. I do not blame you for oh, Adobe being a Good. bunch of tools with their fists up their butts. I didn't want to have my Father's Day ruined, Brian, so I, I appreciate do not, you clarifying everybody that. Everybody listening to the show, do not blame Chris for all the horrors that Adobe is attempting to inflict on us. Now, let's talk about this next story because it affects me and probably affects a few of the listeners out there. Uh, yeah. Cyanamod recently. Uh, Cyanogen mod. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, the alternative Android yeah, distribution. Everyone knows what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, there's actually been sort of revealed through an update process and some malware that snuck in there and things like that that um, then forced them to do another update. That mm. here's kind of a, a a key security vulnerability when you are using um, a custom Android device. Okay. The I'll read here. Here's the thing, because this is a pretty good description. The issue arises since um, the publicly available private keys in the Android open source project are often used to sign ROM builds. Oh, Because okay. they're available public keys, and yeah, you have to have not? a signed ROM in order to run on the device. Makes sense. In the Android security model, any application signed with the same platform signer as the system image can request permissions not available to normal applications, oh. including the ability to install or uninstall applications without user intervention. Interesting. Yeah, and so since these are coming with that signature, yeah. essentially it's, just it's available. People can just grab it and do all sorts of naughty, see, naughty stuff. You really got to watch out where you're getting your mods from. Make sure there's not something in there. Go with well-respected ones. Check the forms and stuff yeah. like that, because that, that that is a, a security risk. Now, just to be clear though, so you're still rocking the Cyanogen mod, right? Not on no. I, when I went Nexus, I went stock because you, you just get like the latest direct from Google. It's anyways. fine anyway. Yeah. But but I mean, on the would Evo, you, yeah, knowing this, I yeah. mean, if you as long as you were careful about it, would you still feel safe yeah. rocking the Cyanogen mod? Yeah, yeah, it's just such a better experience. I mean, it yeah. really, at least on my Evo, compared from stock to this, it's it's like a, it, it it's was like a the big, phone went two years ahead in development. It was a lot more like it was a lot more responsive and everything when I tested. And yours battery out. life better was yeah. better. I mean, so it was worth it, but you just got to be careful. Okay, so there you go, B man. There's that story. Uh, now this is just a quick note because there's not a lot here yet. Is uh, the Mego community is officially launching a device program, and they're looking for people to send them in devices, and uh, they want to basically get their hands on different models and things like that. They've also gotten uh, word from Intel they're going to be throwing in their XOPC tablet. Now I don't actually know what the XOPC looks like, but I guess that's what Intel is going to be donating to the project for testing the development well, of cool. the tablet yeah. UI. Yeah. That's that's cool. Um, now, one thing that I kind of felt... Hey, the more, more things that are running Mego, the better. I felt a little worried, though, that they have to... I kind of wish people were just, like, seeking them out. I kind of feel like that's a bad sign, that they have to be like, anybody want to give us some so, hardware? Someone send us some hardware. We, we, we can run Linux on it. Here's the Intel XOPC that they're... It's uh, a tablet. Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah. I could see Mego working it's, real it's, nice on it's that. It's simple looking. That's fine. Yeah. That's perfect. I do like that. So we'll see yeah. where they go with that. Hopefully, they'll get some hardware and... If you're interested in that, I hope so. in the show notes. I hope so. All right, Brian. One of our last news stories this week. Not the last one, but one of our bring last, it on the last me. official I'll news bring story. It on me. Lay it on me. You bring bet. it bring it to my face. It fits right in with the uh, with the build your own cloud stuff we'll be talking about in a little bit. But own cloud just uh, merged their 2.0 release. Now it's not actually out for download yet. This is really hot off the presses here, but uh, along with a completely redesigned UI, much better media UI, media support, and better browser support. Here's some screenshots if you're watching the video version. Looks nice. Here's what the developer said. He's like, Amazon's throwing down, Google's throwing down. Yep. I'm throwing down. I'm going to start working these features <laughs> in here. You're going to be streaming your media. Love and so it. own cloud, own cloud's going to be getting even more competitive uh, with the 2.0 release. So look for that hitting soon. I'm sure it'll be out in the repos pretty quick. It looks great. Yeah. So yeah. that's own cloud. Now the last. Uh, Last kind of news story isn't really a news story so much. We just wanted to give a shout out to a friend of the show, the the guy that does This Week in Linux over on YouTube. Um, he's a good guy, has lots of good coverage. Um, made the mistake of uh, doing his show on Sundays, I believe, though. That's, that seems like that's... Wait, that's, he does his show on Sundays? I think he might, Brian. Uh, Mr. This Week in Linux. Well, <laughs> that's know. our day. That's our day. That's our day. We made Sunday. That's our day. We made Sunday for yeah. today. Yeah, and, and on the seventh day... Linux Action Show was on. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, actually, we just want to give him a mention because we've had this happen to us once before. Oh, poor dude. We had a viewer who, uh, we, have, we hear from people, we don't know what they do, but we know we have viewers at Google, 
And I know that I think some of them might be in the ad area. We've been we've been helped before when we had ours pulled. Now he's had his pulled. <sighs> um, and it's just sometimes what it is, it's just an automated system that automatically triggers it and causes it to happen. Yep. And if you can get in touch with a human, they can sometimes help you and get it corrected and take a look at and review your case. But so, sometimes I know that's the hard so part. So any, anyone who can help this guy out, go help out Mr. This Week in Linux because he's yeah. a cool dude and uh, honestly, he's put together some great videos and it would be a major bummer for to uh, to lose him. Yeah, the so we'll put a link in the show notes to his video where he explains what happened and if maybe you're in a position where you could at least get him in contact with the right people. I think I think last time it happened to us, we kind of laid down on the show and then I wrote up them some giant yeah. scathing blog yeah, yeah, basically yeah, we, decrying Google as the devil and then... Uh, and then put that all over Dig and, and Reddit we finally and everything. Got some traction. I got about I was I think forty thousand hits to that blog they, they, post, they, and then they're like, "Oh, okay, we'll fix it." They got to work. Google's got to work <laughs> on that because the only recourse people seem to have is to make a big stink. Yeah, but you don't want no. it, as Google, you don't want a big stink made. I mean, you want people to like it. Uh, big C in the chat room, Rapid Big C, as he's also known, uh, gave a hot link here to uh, a blog post about OpenSUSE and online storage great. using own cloud and all that kind of stuff and the build service. So if you've been curious about own cloud, it could be like you know a Dropbox slash file online storage replacement. And if you go up to SUSEgallery.com, there is an own cloud install already sitting there. It's not a hundred percent up to date. It last I checked, but it's close enough to where you can really kind of. Get even space. if you just yeah, I mean, look on this blog post. If you're just running regular open SUSE for eleven four or eleven three, it. one click install own cloud. Yeah, it's great. Brady Dang, it's slick. great. So thanks to Rapid Big C in the chat room for that link. Right, right out. All right, B man. Well, that's all the news for this week. A few weeks back, we did our, uh, you know, de-googling your life episode, mm. where we were talking about basically how to build your own cloud, how yeah. to take all these great services that you've got and put them on either your home server or maybe, uh, you know, a hosted server yeah, up sure. somewhere or a GoDaddy hosted server, something like that. And we started talking and thinking about what the coolest way to do that would be. And one of the ideas that came across was, well, let's use SUSE Studio yeah. to, to build an open SUSE based server yeah. with a lot of our favorite favorite apps pre-installed. Well, here's the problem. It's a phenomenal way to go. It and is. if you are building your own server, and, and I have this done personally, and it works very well, and you have very specific requirements, mm -hmm. it is a very nice way to keep a constantly updated distro. However, it would be a lot easier to just simply say, hey, everybody, here's a base server platform that you can easily administer add what you want. and customize freely. Not and, only that. And, and, and to do it in a very simple way. Not only that, but um, one of the things as we went is like, you know, I also, I don't want to run two servers at my house where I have one server doing my no. media and then one server doing like the web and file and all that stuff. I mean, just you for want, power. You want one box. One box. You got, well, one big server with all of your, your drive storage. And yeah. another thing that's, that's very, very important is doing drive pooling. So you want to kind of have mismatched storage solutions mm, together. So like that way a when I get a spare drive, sizes, drive I yeah. just throw it in my pool. Pop it in an external uh, drive enclosure and away you go. Windows that Home Server not, does that. Windows Home Server does that. You know, honestly. When, actually, no, not anymore, right? They took it out. Well, or they're going to be taking it out. That's something. I don't yeah. know. But that's not a terribly easy thing to configure properly right out of the box. There are a couple of Linux server distributions that do it pretty well. Or it's um, one of those things where you can get it, you know, you can sit down, you can figure it out. But once you get it set up and then you want to go back and add drives, you yeah, want yeah, something where you don't have funky, to sink yeah. in another hour every time you want to do something like that. So over the last couple of months, I've gotten a lot of press releases and a lot of contacts from these guys over at Amahi. Amahi, Amahi is an interesting project where basically what they've done is this. They have taken Fedora, um, and they have customized it and made it so it is coupled with a web administration, basically control panel yeah. that allows you to not only administer your server, but to install new server applications onto your home server. So you set up your server at home, you install Fedora, and then you install this Amahi suite on top of it, or you get like a pre-made Fedora Amahi combo uh, CD or DVD. You get it going, and then you customize it as you wish. And they have basically an app store, which is not really a store because you don't buy anything from it, but it's just kind of a repository of open source server components that you can run yeah, on like your server. Media Wiki's on here, DLNA server so you can stream's on here, Heck, Jukebox servers. Is on there even. Yeah, so you can set up your own little internal web just server. Just about anything. So they I got mean, the whole apps angle, so that's a quick, easy way to add stuff. Quick and easy, and it's really simple. And what's kind of cool about this is once you install it locally, 
it handles the dry pulling. Actually, you should bring up the disc pulling thing here because I love this. This is great. This is a nice this little is really nice. screenshot. And, and that's I think what it they're looks just like. using LVM on the back end because we should say we should frame it up. It's gray hole. You have a couple of different. Oh, that's right. It is gray hole. Yep, yeah, that's right. And uh, uh, they have a couple of different um, uh, ways you can do it. But you can essentially, like Brian said, set up a base fedora box. And then load this on top of it. And what's really neat about it is you go into your web page and they generate you this install code. So you would fill out all this information, like yep. your your router, the, what you want the IP of the box to be, its name, stuff like that. Pretty simple, really. And then they just generate Super you simple. a code, right? And this code that you generate, I was like, okay, what do I do with this thing, right? Well, as you go through the installer, it's a it's a it's a Fedora based installer, right? And uh, they just did, where did I get a yeah? Here we go. At, at one point, they just say, hey, okay, your install's done. Input your code now. So it's all just going through this installer. See, I use, yep. I use an Express CD, too. So I didn't even have to load Fedora. It loaded Fedora for me. I'll put That's a link. nice. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Yeah. It's their, their CD. I, they I, honestly, I wish I would have gone that way. Because it makes it a little the quicker. Fedora install was the most painful part of the entire process. Yeah, and yeah. it's just a little quicker. And so this, at the end of the Fedora installer, it says, hey, give me your code. You enter in the code their website gave you after you filled out all those questions, and then it just auto-sets up all of those kinds of settings on this box. That's so cool. And yeah, basically, it goes up to their server, fetches your settings, brings them back down, auto configures your server how you had it set up on their on their web admin panel and then when you go back into their website you install stuff directly from the website and it syncs it back down to your server and installs yeah. it for you and yeah. kicks it off and gets it started for you it so is so I, great i stepped over i didn't mean you're right in fact i i, I didn't i had not been familiar with grayhole until i started using this and this project made me kind of research what grayhole is and it sounds really interesting it does uh, it's uh, grayhole is an application that uses samba to create a storage pool of all your available hard drives whatever their size, however they're connected. A JBOD concatenation storage pool. And it, and it lets you put them all into one large pool. This sounds extremely fascinating, and it's like it's perfect for this kind of project. Yeah. Uh, so, very, very cool. So this is neat. So and you can, you can do set, per share redundancy. Right. So basically you can say, okay, for my uh, for my videos folder, you know, I put so many videos in there, don't worry about making or like, it redundant. Or like my Usenet downloads where it's just like random Usenet crap. But my photos, make that redundant. I don't want to lose yes. any of my photos, so make sure it's backed up so, so my photos are always stored on so multiple drives. So now I'm managing yeah. what I consider my precious storage a little better. I can say, all right, I'm willing to spend the disk space to back this stuff so up. So cool. I love that. So, so very, very cool. And, and I love when it's just a good, solid Linux technology on the back end that they're using to do it. Yeah, it's a great, great, great now, solution. Now, one thing to call out is Greyhole on their website does say that they don't consider Greyhole to be enterprise ready. Uh, yeah, but you know what? I mean, we're not talking about enterprise here. We're talking about running your home server. You know, you're not this talking 100 users this is, hanging on this is, thing. You know, you know, maybe you, your wife, maybe a couple yeah. of kids, yeah. maybe the random jerk friend who comes over to your house and wants to steal all your files. Things like that. That's what you're you're building this for. There's also uh, there's also a component in there to do some backups of your systems, and it supports you know whichever OS you're running. I didn't get a chance to try that, but it looks pretty I cool. I didn't either, and one of the things that I, I think I might have gleaned is the backup method I'd want to use is only available. You know, one of the things that Amahi doing is they're introducing an ubuntu based version yes it's still an alpha and some of these backup options from my understanding are not available in the ubuntu version right we both went fedora because we wanted to try well, the fedora, fedora is the version right now the, the, the ubuntu based version really doesn't have all the the things in all the bells and yeah. whistles it's not fully baked yet it's really really alpha beta so obviously once this thing's done you get uh you get a samba server on your network you can do dlna streaming if you install the app but the other thing it does and i don't i don't know how much i can show because I might have info in here that I you can't... Don't want, you want people to see your yeah. install codes and whatnot. But it also syncs up with an Amahi dashboard, so you can kind of see the status of your server from anywhere you're at. From anywhere. And it, if you if you work, if you work connect in with its dynamic DNS services, it can automatically update a dynamic DNS service with your home IP, so if you're on DHCP with your ISP. Yep. And it has built-in support for VPN. So you can go here, you can see the status of the VPN connection, you can see uh, all this kind of... I don't know, how much can I show? That, that's Can fine. I show? Yeah. Here, I'll show that. So I have it off right now, so it says it's not updating. And you can see my, there's my uh, my dynamic DNS is uh, chrislast.yourhda.com. And uh, you can see there's don't its... Don't go any further. Well, I won't go too much further. You can see there's... <laughs> Careful. Its in, there's Careful, its, Chris. There's this internal networking info and all this kind of stuff. And uh, I can also see that I have an alert available for my server yeah. from their dashboard. So if I'm at work or something like that... You can just like check that, this out, yeah. Love that. It's great. And, you know, like... And I, free. 
And it's great. And just just like a little side tip, if you've got a dynamic DNS or like this sort of thing set up through Amahi, it's really easy to go into whatever handles your main DNS for a main domain and point it at your dynamic DNS. Yeah. So like like for instance, I've got a dynamic DNS setup going for my BBS at home. BBS.lunduke.com actually resolves to like uh, House of Lunduke BBS dynamic DNS dot whatever. Oh, nice. So really, so you just update no the dynamic. One, no one ever even has to know that's a dynamic DNS. You could have yeah. Microsoft.com resolving to a dynamic. DNS yeah. and yeah. no one would be the wise. And with this service on there, it just auto updates that for you. So exactly. now it's all you're, taken you're care of. You're always taken care of. So you always can just go to say webmail.lunduke.com and boom, you're at my at my webmail. Uh, so it's free. They offer, I think right now, the only way to make money is through a paid support for 35 bucks through a PayPal transaction. Yeah. Um, I honestly don't know what their angle is here, but this is one of the slickest Linux based media cool. systems, server systems I've seen in a long time. Very cool. And I like I like some of the technologies they're choosing to go with here too. So I'm excited about that. Plus it's, Yes. I like I like the fact that I can load my own OS first. I mean I don't have to with their Express CD, but, but you kinda, like that you can. I do. Now now uh, I gotta say this. All right. It's based on Fedora, the current version well, anyway. Okay. So I've been pretty harsh on Fedora. Uh, neither of us have exactly given Fedora glowing reviews in recent recent we months. We have run Fedora's servers in the past, though. Well, we have. Yeah. And we ran LinuxActionShow.com on a Fedora server for Long a couple time. years. Yeah. 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 Um, so, but but I want to say this: this is the easiest way totally, to administer yeah. a Fedora server I have ever seen in my entire life. And and, and this is the setup e is crazy quick too. Crazy quick. I d I never have to drop in. Uh, once you get the Amahi servers installed, I never have to talk, you don't drop have to. in no. and use a package manager yeah. of any kind. It's phenomenal. And uh, here's here's actually something I think is funny. All right. Can you go to the 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 shot we've got there where they've got the uh, the theme? Uh, you know so what I'm talking about? Have? The uh, Fedora theme. Yeah, the products yeah. page. I'll look for it. Yeah, where they yeah. have the old DNA thing. Uh, so they've got on 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 the mahi.org. Yeah. Uh, if you uh, where, where is that at? Is come on, come on, bring that up. Bring that up. There, there, there we go. Yeah, there we go. It? Scroll down. Wait, yep, 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 there, yep, it there it is. There it is. There it is. Uh, let's get a screenshot of that in you here. Just, you just wanted to rub this in, didn't you? I'd have to rub this in. On amahi.org. Yeah. If you go into their gallery whoa, whoa, page, all over the they place. say, hey, it's open source based on Fedora. That's pretty cool, right? The screenshot they use is of the wallpaper of the DNA theme, which was the theme for Fedora Core 6. Yes. And we have constantly called this out as the high mark for everything Fedora has ever done in terms of design and whatnot. And apparently the Amahi folks agree the Fedora Core 6 was the best there yeah. was. Uh, and I just have to point that out, that it's, they're not using any of the thing after they drop the core. I think that's funny. They uh, So actually... At least in terms of that graphic. This is a great page to be on because there's a couple of it things. It actually is the latest version of Fedora. There's a couple of things we didn't touch on. Uh, we did give a quick mention of a VPN, uh, but uh, it also will do uh, disk disk monitoring for like heat and things like that. Yeah. Um, it also will do central calendaring, which you can then subscribe to with the WebDAV calendar protocol, and it does iCal integration on Mac OS X. And there's a couple of extra apps in there for using different calendars, and you can mm -hmm. install iOS that we've talked about the, the uh, previously in the in the previous thing. Like oh, e I, yeah, e like, e, yeah, like the human iOS. Yeah. You can install that on there. You can install RoundCube on there. There's so many things you a can install. A lot of the stuff you you made as a pick. Now this is kind of the thing that brings it all together. Right. You can. Make, it's a very easy way to this just one awesome click, fun. really almost one click, install so many of these cool tools. Yeah. And you know you'll still want to probably go in and tweak them a little bit and configure them to your liking. But to get them up and running to get them installed it's just so here's freaking a, easy here's a couple uh, examples of some of the apps on their front page right now DocuWiki which is a great documentation wiki yeah, for a nice. small company uh, they've got a PHP my backup on here which is a MySQL backup program lots of stuff uh, let's look at the home category see what they got you got uh, oh, Amahi Tunes so you can stream Gallery if you have iTunes too. Transmission might be interesting, right? So you could turn your server into a torrent box. Yep, I like that. Gallery, it's very cool. oh yeah, Gallery too. You're a big Gallery. Yeah, I fan. use Gallery for my, you know, for my web gallery. But you know, that's the thing is, is Amahi makes no pre assumptions about what your server is going to be used for. It doesn't say, oh, of course right. you're just going to use this for webmail and file storage. It doesn't. You, who knows? Who knows what you'll use it for? I'll be using so it you for use it for, Yeah, you want to use it for downloading your Usenet files. You want to use it for serving up torrents. You want to use it for streaming video over the internet to your computer. Compatible you devices. Notice this, it doesn't matter. Now, it's this cool. app, I didn't pay for any app. So this app, this app is paid. So they probably also yeah. make some money off that too. 
There's a couple of those. Yeah. But for yeah. the most part, it's all, you know, just free stuff. Literally like a couple of them, it looks like. So very, yeah. very small amount. But uh but I, even I so, give this the ones that are pay stuff are like a couple of bucks. And uh, and that's that's I mean, come on. It, it's such quality stuff. I mean I'm giving this thing a thumbs up, hey, man. Huge thumbs up. Yeah. Huge thumbs up. Amahi A M A H I dot. And the other thing I like cool. is uh if you do have multiple servers, you they have their control panel set up to manage multiple servers. Yeah. So you can go in there and just select the server. You don't you need want. multiple accounts or anything. Yeah, yeah. It's just multiple servers under one account account was really neat all in one spot and, and this thing could be so as cool. much as a home media server as it is a small business server with a work group calendar and a wiki and what? a wordpress blog and all yeah. that i know it could be just as much a small business machine it totally could yeah it totally could I, I i love this honestly you know it's uh i still plan to give free nas a look down the road but this guy is pretty nice this it's really hard to compete with this you know uh between this and the the b3 uh, dedicated server box. Um, yeah. Oh, dude. Uh, I know, honestly, right? honestly, that that kind of covers any needs I might have for home I server agree. type work, and it's it's pretty phenomenal. There is a quick other points. Uh, there is some hardware out there too that they're recommending you can get this on. But here's the minimum requirements: you need a gigahertz CPU. That's nothing. Yeah. Four gigs of disk space. And 512 megs of RAM. The more Basically, the what they're saying is this will run on a triple E PC uh, original. Yeah, of, you could, huh? Box. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, I have various links. <laughs> could. And did. I have various links that I will throw <laughs> in the show notes, including a link to Greyhole, which you could load on any Linux box, I would think. Uh, you don't have to use Amahi to get yeah, that. Yeah, you, you can load that up anywhere. But uh, Greyhole, I'll put a link to in the show notes, and I got a few other things in there, including uh, I saw some people are working on like a little plug Linux computer you could load this on, which could be oh, really cool. Be really so cool. a little low power device for this. Wouldn't that be so cool to be able to load a little plug computer up, and you never even have to SSH into it. You never got got yeah. got to just sit anything there into it. Linuxing it up for it. Yeah, and and if you want to change what's on it, just load up your Mahi control panel. You know, uninstall mm -hmm. a couple apps, add a few more apps, and then uh, it takes care of it for you. There you go. Super cool. That's our look, Brian, right Super there. Super cool. Uh, Two I thumbs up. I don't want to say this to take away from the, the SUSE Studios guys, because honestly, it's a very different solution. Uh, if you're looking to have yeah. a really mega, highly customized, button-down, crazy server that's just constantly updated with the latest and greatest packages, oh, SUSE Studio is still, I think, a better way to go. But if you want to get a home server up and running with a lot of different tools really fast... I'd say Amahi is like the best choice that there is out there. It's just way too freaking easy. I yeah. mean, way, <laughs> really. I mean, seriously, way too freaking easy. Like, like seriously, I'm, you're like, if you if you're not really that big on uh, configuring your MySQL installation, Amahi. Yeah, That's, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, it is yeah. good. It's a good look. And if you guys have got a chance to try it out there, let us know what you think. Or if you found something else that you like a lot, let us know what you think. Totally. You can leave a comment wherever you're watching this or head to jupitercalling.com and there's a Linux Action Show sub form in there. That is fantastic. All right, B-Man, that's our look at the Amahi Home Server. The only way we allow you to run Fedora. And that brings us to the end of this week's fantabulous broadcast. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. I think it was a good thing that you did. And we will do it again next week. But if you want to get a hold of us in the meantime, yeah, you got Facebook.com slash Jupiter Broadcasting. You got that. Uh, you got the Twitter.com slash Ooh. various words. I like that. Uh, you got links the in the show notes. Jupiter Jupiter Colony dot com. Mm -hmm. That's that's our website, I like right? That place. We got that place. We got Jupiter Broadcasting dot com. That's pretty good. I love that place. That's not bad. I love it. We got other ones, don't we? Mm. We got jblive TV. Oh yeah, that's where you can watch us you live. Ten a.m. on Sundays, except for on next Sunday, week, but not next Sunday because we're screwing with you. Yeah. Uh, some good stuff there. That's pretty much all of it. That's all I got. I like that. I I want to have more information to belay to you. That's a word, right? Nope. 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 Not a word. Nope. <laughs> nope. You could use relay to relay. Belay. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, you, you talk right, for a right, second. There you go. Now, Belay. Uh, if, uh, if anybody out there is running the new free NAS too, I want to hear your feedback because I think we'll have a review coming up on that pretty soon. And like the B-man said, he's not... Belay. Verb. Nautical. Like, to fasten a rope by winding around a pin or short rod inserted in a holder so that both ends of the rod uh, are clear. Like the B-Man always says, we want to delay climbing as much to, to secure as possible. a person by attaching to one end of a rope. I don't uh. think, see, yeah, you were kind of off on that. Uh, to cease, to stop, to ignore. Hmm, well, 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 you might be able to make those work. Huh. Hey, Brian, I feel like I've done a bad I job like of using this word. I feel like you're the show right now. I am the <laughs> show uh, big time. So uh, if you would like to watch us again. There you go. Live Do it. next Thursday. Watch the calendar. 
or not live. Download it on next Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, that's how you do it. Either both. Works. Fantastic. There you have Fantastic. It. Trip the lights. It's like it's like lazing a stick of dynamite. Let's get the heck out of here. Yeah, I'm done. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for watching this week's episode of the <laughs> Linux Action Show, and we'll see you next week. Most likely. Well, like like in like five days. Yeah. Or seven. No, like five. Well, or seven, depending. All right. this yeah that, that's probably exactly what you need to do to fix it that's probably the god all right sling i just want a picture oh god yeah. you got it you I'm got it can you believe they put a man on the moon man on the moon da, 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 eh. can you believe man on the moon <laughs> man on the moon man on the moon all right b man all right we're back Ready when you are, sir. Rock and roll football fantasy camp. Take one.